Good morning, it's the Grow Boss. It's the couple hours we'll do today on Sunday. Uh, we'll start the show in a couple of minutes. If uh, if uh, you watch the uh, Floyd Mayweather fight, fantastic. I didn't watch one second of it, but you did, so we don't have to talk about it on the show because it's all about cannabis. <clears throat> Perfect. <laughs> so give me a couple minutes, I'm smoke a bowl, you smoke a bowl, then we'll start the show. Good morning.
Oh, you need. All right, all right, all right. Hang on. Okay, go lay down. Get your tree. All right. Listen, I got to work. Do your thing. Do your thing. No, 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 no. No, I know, I know. Come here. Come here. You're such a good dog. You're such a good dog. But but I don't want to play hide and seek with you. Oh, Albert, your computer's going to be too much trouble for free. I know. You're such a good dog. You're such a good dog. You're such a good dog. All right, I guess it's time to start the show. It's 10 o'clock. Good. It's 9 o'clock. Good morning, everybody. Ah, No, no, no. Go lay down. Go lay down. I know. Go lay down. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. The dog and I usually play uh, hide and seek out back. I throw his bully stick somewhere in the alleyway out back, and he goes and chases it. I usually start a little bit before the show, but... I am not the most organized individual. So, this is Cannabis Talk, Cannabis 101. This is all about cannabis. This is, ah, this is my hydro store. And I, I, I super love it. Like, like, it is so nice now without all this crap. Like, I can go over here. I can go all the way back over here and come around the corner over here. And I'm over here now. Ah, oh, I mean, there's just so much room in my hydro store. And if you want to call in because you have questions, you can call the show. The number is 84 Grow Boss. And you can call the show and talk to me about cannabis. Because if you call the store, I'm going to tell you, you got to come in. <laughs> so when you're calling me from out of state or you're calling me from up north in, in uh, Nevada, just know that I don't answer questions on the phone. Does it make me a dick? Yeah, maybe, but I don't really care what you think. I'll tell you what I do care about. I care about that you grow great cannabis because I hate it when you guys bring me crappy cannabis. Oh, fuck, this camera doesn't work. I hate it when you guys bring me crappy cannabis because then I end up smoking it and it's crappy cannabis. Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, is that... No, no, lost this cam right here. I lost my close-up cam. Those are all the cams that I got for the store. That was my close-up cam. So I got to put it together like this so you can see everything that goes on. Those are all my different cams. Ha, so the number is 84 Grow Boss. If you'd like to call in, um, I'm waiting on a call for 207. I think next week I'm going to have 420 My Ninja. I think this is the guy who's going to come in and uh, do some, come and get high with me. And he's going to press some cannabis to 
Oh, you know what? I actually think it was, uh, yeah, you know, all that light I was worried about, it's actually my friggin' monitor that's blasting me with too much light. So, this is Sunday, and you guys are probably hungover from the Mayweather fight that went 10 rounds. I did read the news. I did not watch it. I assume, oh, this is Old Navy weed. If you watch that Garden Rescue, ah. Uh, Oh, guy just rolls the best joint. So I'm assuming the Mayweather fight went something like this. And then there's a ref that did something like this. And there's a bunch of people in the audience like that. And then the fight was over and they all had to get in their cars and lift an Uber and go home. So real news would be like Texas or some shit like that. Or we could talk about growing cannabis. So if you have questions about growing cannabis, the number is 84 Grow Boss. I uh, I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, which I should have around here somewhere. Ah, uh, yes, the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. Why? Because this is my hydro store, and I know everything there is to know about growing. Mm. And I know everything there is to know about the growers that come in my store. And perhaps that's really the thing here is the growers that come in my store because I got to tell you growing cannabis is super easy and it isn't what you guys think it is and it isn't the deal that you guys make out of it and it isn't any it doesn't have anything to do with any of that so I'll tell you what no no I'll tell you what the secret to growing cannabis is you're such a good boy, son. Give me a kiss. I love you so much. I'm gonna sit down here for a minute. Oh, okay. Come on in. Ha, ah, yes. My kid's up visiting. He's got grandkids. My kid's got kids. Yes, it is. It's super awesome to see him. So, I got to hang out with my youngest who has two kids. It's awesome. So funny how much like me he is and how much like how much his kid is like him mm. okay so i was telling you it's about the growers right anybody can grow cannabis shit it grows all by itself doesn't require anything from you that's why the secret to growing cannabis is never what growers think it is um let's see quick our foxtails bad see ben foxtails usually are uh, when it goes a little long Richie Rich, um, um, no, you can't. I don't think aminos are going to prevent um, um, uh, molds. You I mean you could spray it on some and see what happens, but it's not what it says on the bottle. Grows like a weed, easy, easy. Ah, you need to go to the sperm bank tomorrow. Never forever. Excellent. Okay. I never, you never see me roll a joint. I know, you know why? Because my joint rolling skills are nil. I put it in a dollar, and that's the only way it comes out looking like it's supposed to. Um, kelp fulvic acid. I think fulvic acid's an amino acid too. Um, they're long chain molecules. The a fulvic acid is, fulvic and humix are long chain molecules organic molecules with uh with many ends on them i'll tell you what humix and fulvix do i think i have a uh i think i have a picture for that <coughs> let me see ah, i don't even i think i have one specific picture for humix and fulvix i think it's in this book Yeah, those are, it's a, a humic and fulvix are a nice touch. So these are organic molecules separated by weight. One rises and one sinks. I believe humic is the one that sinks and and is the one that you really want. I believe humic is called God's molecule. And pow, yeah, close up cam, no worky. Okay. 
Oh, I'm going to fix this right now. Okay. See all the edges around? See all the edges around? See all the edges? Okay. The sharp edges? Um, Humix are like uh, Velcro. They have lots of different hooks around the edge. They're called God's molecule because the Humix pull all the micros and nutrients. They grab them all. <clears throat> they have all sorts of different hooks that are meant to grab onto different ions and they take them all with them. When the plant pulls it up through the root, the Humix bring all the micros and everything else, all the nutrients with it. That's why... Um, Okay, so that's, so that's the difference between them. As far as uh, John Doe, the humidity packs, do they pull humidity out or just keep humidity? They're a buffering action. So if your humidity, if you, let's say you got a 62% pack, your humidity is 64, it will absorb water. You crack the lid open and now it's down to 60%. You put the top back on and close it at 60%. The humidity pack will now add 2%. That's why the humidity pack has to match the size of the container that you're in. Because if you don't have enough humidity, it'll suck all the moisture out of the humidity pack. It will desiccate it. 585, good morning. What can I do for you today? Hey there, Grow Boss. How you doing today? Good morning. I am doing exceptional, sir. What can I do for you? I'm, I'm wondering about CO2. I okay. used it in my garden a few weeks ago and almost killed it. I was curious about the ratio or like the relationship of feeding it during adding CO2. Okay. So tell me a little bit more about how you interpret it. What were you doing? How did you use it? Uh, basically, I had a CO2 tank, about a 20 gallon. I think that's what they're called. Uh, I had a, a micro, uh, like a pre-drilled micro hold uh, hose that went around the whole canopy. And okay. I put it at 0.5, and I ran it on a timer for 15 minutes on and 15 minutes off. How much light did you have? I had a total of 400 watts. Ouch. So when I hear somebody say I have a total, um, it always makes me want to ask, was that... 90 CFLs that you bought from Walmart? Was it two 200s? Was it a 150 and a 200 HID? How did you do that? Okay, I had a 400 HPS and I was in the, I think of that, my seventh week of veg. So let's just be clear. You said you had a total of 400. How did that, how, what did you mean by that if you only have the one light? Oh, at that time, that's all I had in there. Oh, you had a total of like one light. Of you had a total of one light set to 400. Okay. <clears throat> so now you're in veg and you've got CO2. Are you venting your veg area? No, I had it sealed 10. It's a uh, five by five. Okay. And it didn't get too hot? No, I have an air conditioner and a dehumidifier running in the room. That's a lot of electricity for a 400 watt light. So, <laughs> I'm running 812 watts total. Wait, say that again. I'm running 812 watts total for the room, fans and everything. How do you have an AC that's running at less than 1,000 watts? It only pushes out like 425. It's a um, small air conditioner. So, this is a window air conditioner. So the window air conditioner uses 420 watts worth of electricity. Okay. And you have a 400 watt light and you have a dehumidifier. Right. The dehumidifier runs like two or three times a day at about 50 watts every time that it turns on. Okay. Um, I, I want to point, one thing that I'd like to start by pointing out is one of the things that I tell you is a 400 watt is the minimum amount of light required for you to get through flower. So 400 watts is about, max is about 10, 12 weeks worth of light. You really can't grow beyond that. So you're eight weeks veg. Right. So you had planned to go into flower. What did you plan to go into flower? How much light were you going to finish with? 600? I'm going to actually finish with 800. I have two on, what is it? What is it? The four by eights and two eight, uh, two eight ball bangers, the quantum bad boys. Okay. All right. 
So I, I just I would like to point out that when you say that you have two in flower, that you have 800 watts, I just want to point out that you don't have 800 watts. What you have is two 400 watt lights because they're not aimed at the same plant. Therefore, you have two gardens both under 400. So what you technically have is a three light rotation where you have 400 in veg and two flowers with 400 each. They may both be in the same tent. Both lights may be on at the same time. And you do technically have a total of 800 watts in flower, but it would be more accurate to describe yourself as saying, I've got a 400 watt HID veg with two 400 watts in flower. That is a, listen, I know it sounds, suddenly I feel so Starbucky, but I'm just saying when you go to Starbucks and they say, oh, you got a Pike Grande. And I'm like, no, 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 I got a large coffee. It turns out that Pike is a coffee and that I'm the one who looked, you know what I mean? Like, so when we talk about the equipment, we always, we always have to describe the equipment accurately. So we all know what we're talking about. So we got a 400 watt HID veg and two 400 watt flowers. It's brilliant. It's a three light rotation. You're good for a pound every 60 days or a half a pound a month. All right. Now what's the cooling? Just curiously, what's the cooling that you have in flower? Say again. What? How are you cooling flour? Cooling them? Yeah, in flour you have eight hundred watts. If you have an air conditioner right. and veg, what's in your flour tent to cool that? Oh, same thing. I'm I'm out of veg now. I had I'm way into flour now. I'm like six weeks. Of, today starting the six weeks of flour. Okay, so you use the same air conditioning. You just put it in the flour tent. Well. Sorry, sorry. You, I understand what you did. You took out the 400 watts and then you put both four foot eight bulbs in the five by five tent, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Whew. Listen, it's no different than going on a paramedic call. You got to ask the questions. Okay. If you want the answers, you got to discover right. the true nature of the emergency. And to discover the true nature of the emergency in this case, we have to get a visual on what you're doing. So technically, okay. you have a one light rotation where you start with 400 and then you flower with 800 because it's all happening in the same tent. It's happening consecutively, not concurrently. Okay. <clears throat> Now you had at by week seven veg, you said you had one half PSI CO2, 15 on 15 off, right? Yes. Okay. When I tell just, and I don't think this is the cause yet, but what I would like to suggest is that what I tell you guys in my book, and this is only while the lights are on, you only use CO2 while the lights are on. CO2 is also heavier than air. So the CO2 falls to the bottom below the leaves of the plant, but that's okay because when the plant absorbs CO2, it absorbs it from the bottom of the release, the leaf and releases O2 out the top and it sucks the light in from the top. So, CO2 below the plant is just fine. Why do you think the CO2 receptors are on the bottom of the leaf? Because CO2 is heavier than air and the plants are smarter than you are. They're smarter than I am anyway. So I meant us. Yeah. The plants are smarter than us. That was what I meant. Um, so my point here is that the plants want CO2. And even if you gave them 2,500, I don't particularly think it would kill the plants. So I tell you at the start of flower, it's a half PSI per thousand Watts for the first few weeks. It's one PSI per thousand Watt for the next couple weeks. And you finish at one PS 1.5 PSI per thousand Watts. Um, that's sort of the schedule that I re recommend when you use a 15 on 15 off timer. And what we're talking about that is, um, you had mentioned earlier, uh, you can't really see the picture. You had mentioned earlier when you were talking about the 20 pounds, 20 gallons of CO2, it's actually CO2 is actually a gas. So they measure it in 20 pounds, not 20 gallons. So it's the weight of the tank okay. plus 20 gallons of the liquid CO2. And, and the, the specifically, the reason that I brought this, this, uh, that I brought this up was because I wanted you to, I wanted you to 
work. Bah! I love you, son. Thank you. All right. So, um, okay. So the reason that I brought this up and I wanted to show you is because this is more like nitrous. See how, see how that dial right there? All right. So there's a dial right there. See that dial? That dial measures in PSI. The problem is your tank is filled with gallons. And <clears throat> depending on the temperature, it works just like a nitrous bottle. Depending on the temperature, the colder the air, the lower the gas pressure inside um, above. So the bottom is full with liquid. Now, if you remember the old school soda stream bottles, they had a bottle that went, they had a tube that went down and picked up the liquid CO2 from the bottom. That's not how our tanks work. Our tanks pick up the gas from the top. So when you open the nozzle, the gas at the top comes shrieking out. The old style, you'd open it up and the liquid CO2 comes out. And that's what they use for the fog machines in town at the clubs is they use the liquid CO2. So you just want the gas. The problem is you can't gauge how much CO2 I sold you by the gauge on the regulator because <clears throat> I sold you 20 pounds of CO2. 20 pounds. It doesn't matter if I sold you 20 pounds of feathers or 20 pounds of bricks. I put 20 pounds. The guy who swaps my tanks out puts 20 pounds in them and then they bring them to me, right? So it's 20 pounds. It has nothing to do with PSI. You know what I mean? If you kept heating up the tank, the PSI would get to 4,000 and blow. <clears throat> okay, so I don't particularly think that the amount of CO2 that you were given on that schedule with that light, while excessive, yes, I don't think it was going to kill your plant. So negatively affect. So let's talk a little more about what went wrong with your plants. So you said you sure. used it in veg. Tell me more about that. Hmm. Do you want to know about the plants or like how I actually just use the CO2? I want, I, I'd like to, you can tell me about the CO2 and tell me about the problems that your plants had. All right. The problems that my plants had is everything was yellowing and the leaves were getting this like blackening to the middle intervenal notes. They were just, they were just dying off quicker than shit. I, I was down to like, uh, I was from a one and a half foot canopy to about five inches of canopy within one week all the leaves just died okay actually you might have had too much co2 <laughs> dude that was a lot of co2 you had in that room <clears throat> okay, um, also i have a total of 15 points in that tent. say that again also i have a total of 15 plants in the tent they're all in in uh Five gallon bucket. Woo. Okay, so that's not very much light. Now, the reason I asked about the CO2 use is because we needed to know, but I still am not sure. If the, I'm just got to tell you, one of the things that I learned, I'll tell you why I'm, I'm still going down that plant route with you. One of the things I learned as a paramedic was uh, you can make me say, hmm. If you make me say, hmm. I'm not going to transport you. You make me say, damn, and you're going to the hospital or you're signing my form. Now, just so you know, two, two hmms equal one damn. And you've got me on a couple of hmms so far. So while not ah, mission critical yet, I'm still not feeling like I've discovered this problem. I just don't feel like I'm there yet. So you've got, you've got your vegging. You're in five gallon buckets. Now, I, I can't imagine vegging for eight weeks or less and being in a five gallon bucket. And um, I'll tell you the problem that I have just just so e just so everybody knows, because you've you've watched me talk about the one three seven transplant. I would just like to point out that if you take a hood and, I, and you'll see this on the screen in a second for me. But let's say you take a hood. Now, I'm going to make I'm going to make five gallon buckets. Um, so we can let's see. All right, so I'm going to make these five gallon buckets, and I'm going to sh my my observation with the five gallon buckets is always if you put little plants in big buckets. 
my question is always uh how does the light work because from my opinion i'm showing you on here like you've got 15 one two three there's 15 right here in my opinion a 400 watt light this is a five by five tent so let's write five by five tent so you have a five by five tent and a 400 um I'm just developing the image as I talk, so it'll come through to you. You have a 400 watt HID, 400 watt equals 400 watt equals two by four by two feet deep, two by four by two. Um, you're in a five by five. <laughs> so my question is, if 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 you're pretty much edge to edge in that tent, right? With your buckets. Yeah, the whole tent is filled. Okay, so how far away is the light? So how far away is the light? Uh, I'd have to say about two and a half feet. Okay, how tall is the tent? The tent is seven feet tall. Okay, so let me save this as show start two. How tall is the tent? Sorry. Uh, seven feet tall. Okay. So what I would like to point out is that you, and I'm just drawing another picture because it's going to help you get this. So um, seven feet, uh, let's do five by five by seven here. Okay, so you got five by five by seven. Your, your plants are... And, I mean, you know, clearly, clearly my graphic talent is stunning and overwhelming you. And you're just like, oh, my God, he's so good. That looks just like my garden. <laughs> um, okay, so all right, let me just, uh, I'm just trying to keep it in perspective for you. Okay, so boom, boom. Okay, so you got all these plants. Um, your light, as far as I can tell, the angle from your light is two by four. So this is four feet. So you've got, I mean, your how big, sorry, what size hood do you have? Sorry. What size hood do you have? Oh, I have the quantum bag with four by one. Oh, okay, so you have a four, okay. So I would prefer to even do this. So you have, all right, all right, you guys, I thought I heard the phone ringing. Okay. All right, I thanks, I appreciate that. Huh. I, okay, so apparently what happened was you and I lost the stream for a sec. And so somebody called that said they lost the stream. Bah, so there you go. close. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, listen, it's not that I was getting high. That wait, that not you. Somebody, one of the. Yeah, it's not that I was getting high. No, that wasn't what it was. Okay, what it was is there's something on this keyboard that I touched that did the screen when I was making the image. So, um, yeah. See what I mean? And I don't even know what the hotkey is, Jordan. Bah. Okay. All right. So. This was the, let me just catch everybody up. This was, this was the last picture that I put up there. Um, so this was all of his plants in a cross section view. This is 15 plants and five gallon buckets. I just want to point out that my argument is that you took too much light over too great an area. Now here's six bulbs. Eight bulbs are a little wider. Ralph did it. Okay, so eight bulbs are a little wider. I, I don't I don't see how you could keep the light this close. Okay, I don't see how you can keep the light uh, this close and expect 400 watts. So this 400 watts is a two by four. So it's so if this is five feet wide. Technically, this light should be two feet wide by four feet long. 
you sir have this light being used like this in a five by five so i'm suggesting two by four which is eight square feet two feet deep okay so i think i fixed the live stream javier thank you so Dude, let me just take a moment and say, I apologize for losing the live stream. We went down to 90 users and I'm back up to almost where I was the instant before. So I appreciate you guys, uh, you guys sticking around. Uh, listen, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a free show. So, you know, uh, um, okay. So my observation, and this is why I couldn't, I wasn't feeling the CO2 thing yet. See, I'm suggesting eight square feet or 16 cubic feet, two feet deep. You, sir, are doing 25 square feet, which is technically 25 cubic feet. So I'm suggesting that your light is 16 cubic feet max, man. And you're almost, you're, you're, I mean, you said your canopy was like 18 inches deep. That would put you at 5 by 5, 25 plus 50% more. You'd be at 37 cubic feet where I'm suggesting 16. That's beyond 100% more. So if you had put all of those plants, let's say, in a in a three-gallon bucket, they would have fit in an area that was probably something more like this. Now, if you had kept it like that, you would have been at, I say, two by four. You were at five by five. Even if you were at four by four, at least all the plants would have looked, would have been underneath there. Now, again, my suggestion is, I just want to point out that this is what five plants look like at the end of week four, okay? And you're at week eight. So the question that I have with an 18-inch canopy I mean, that's just, I mean, you're running real thin on the light there. I'm, you know what I mean? Like you're running real thin. Like you've stretched that light to its absolute max. And so I'm feeling like there's a little something going on in that direction too. So um, in terms of all of those plants, you were vegging them for, it was, you said like you were seven weeks of veg. Um, how tall were they like, you know, from the ground up with the bucket included? 18 inches high at the time I was running CO2. Now they're 27 inches tall. Okay. Are you measuring from the top of the bucket? Uh, from the, from the floor <coughs> to the top of the plant. Ah, ooh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go back and, um, uh, let's go back and let's take a look at, let's, let's examine that. What size, you say you're in a five gallon bucket. How do you get 18 inches off the floor with a five gallon bucket? Oh, um. I had it at the time of veg. I had the floor lowered. Sorry, say that again. I, I'm sorry. When I when I measured the veg, you're right. From the top of the bucket up, it was 18, not the bottom of the bucket. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and now I would just like to point. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you'd like to say what? No, I, I would just like to point out that I, I feel like I'm getting a little closer to the problem here because. Because when you look at this picture, and listen, you got, you got this video stream up right now, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to leave this picture up until you can see it. These plants here are 20, let's say 24 inches tall from, from the drip ring to the top. When they get stripped, the canopy will probably be 14, 16 inches tall. But this is 24 inches. I want you to tell me how your plants compare to this. Okay, so these are two rows of three hundred of six bulb T5s, and now I'm going to open up the next picture after this, and I would like to ask you if your plants looked more like these, because this, and I'll circle it for you. Um, okay. The, if your plants looked more like these, so there's a couple of pictures coming your way, and I think that we're going to get into quality of plant I don't think the I don't think it was the CO2. 
I think there were several other things that you had happen. Uh, you created the situation. I think there are several other things where you created a situation such that um, the CO2 became too much for the plant because black spots and leaves falling off, yeah, that's possible with CO2. Black spots with gray dots, however, are thrips. The thrips eat the cuticle, the waxy cuticle off the leaf, and the gray is like moonlight because when the light hits it, it absorb it reflects gray instead of green. So you get gray spots with black dots. The black dots are the thrips poop. So they smear the 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 black dots smear. Wash your hands. Now, have you seen these pictures? Have they come up yet? Yes, you've got the red box around the, uh, yeah. the third row. That's like okay. 18 inches. Is that what your plant looks like? Yeah, that's about what they look like. Okay, do they do they look healthy like those other plants, like super bright green? Do they look like, you know, bright green and healthy? Yes, they did. I didn't have any purpling at the time. Okay, so you're in a five-gallon bucket. How often were you watering? Uh, once a week. Bah. I bet you overwatered. I can't imagine. I can't imagine right. once a week in a five-gallon bucket. Also, if you're light, also you're running thin on light. You're running super thin on light. I just don't believe that five gallons would require once a week of water, nor do I believe that you had enough light. Now, I would like to say this. If you took those 15 plants and you put eight, seven under one of the other four foot eight bulbs and eight under the other one. So let's say they're both in a five by 10 tent, both lights. So you have five by five veg, five by 10. You put them both into flower, but you divide them in half. Um, I would guess in, in, I'm sorry, I'm not even going to say guess. I'm going to insist that at that point, I would have said that, that I would have said that you, oh, you had just the one tent and you're doubling, you're going from a 400 watt HID, a 400 watt HID to the quantums. Um, I, I'm just, listen, I think that, what happened was you, because you kept all the plants in the same spot and then you increased the light. In fact, you would have had to double the light because you, you literally went from one to two. Um, I think it was, the light was close. The light was too, I think your plants were probably thin and on the overwatered side. And I think CO2. So there's a couple things I tell you. When you go into flower and you've overwatered, if you haven't overwatered brutally, when you go into flower and you have elephant foot, what happens is over the next couple of weeks, they yellow from the bottom up and the leaves drop. If you've, if you've overwatered too much, the plants yellow from the bottom up and then get what's called sudden wilt. Blam, they fall. The bucket is still full of water, but all the leaves and the entire plant fall. You can see the image of that on, uh, on page... 153 so the whole plant is set of the grow book and equipment guide the growboss.com don't forget to like the videos damn it click the like button watch my videos subscribe to the channel right huh, huh? i'm remembering you guys are watching me learn okay okay um so my observation is that there are different levels of watering, and I know which one you did based on the result. If you got sudden wilt, which is where the whole plant, even with a wet bucket, falls over, you can't rehydrate it. The bucket's wet. That was brutal overwatering. Um, in this particular case, you had definitely too much because I'm suggesting, just keep it in perspective, I'm suggesting watering once a week at the start of transplant, and then by the end of that bucket, you should be watering twice a week. So when you took your clone, how did you get these plants? Tell me a little more about plants. I cloned them. Okay, so you took them out of the clone. The clone. What did you put them in? Under, under the clone light. Right what did top. they go in? red cups okay how long uh for about three weeks nice okay so you take them out of the red cup is that part of veg 
Uh, I would say no. They were okay. still basically seedlings at that point. Okay, so we still have, because you said you had a seven-week veg. So I'm looking for, so they come out of the red cup. Then what do they go in? Well, they actually, they actually went 10 weeks. But after the red cup, they went into a one-gallon smart pot. How long? And then after, after For how long? After how long were they? Four weeks after that, I put them in the uh, five gallon. Okay. When you took them out of the smart pots, did you get that root rip? Ah. No, not not too much. One plant did, but the others didn't. I, I loosened them up pretty good, and I used a uh, like uh, uh, just like a uh, butter knife to go around the inside of the pot. Okay, but did you feel the roots ripping and breaking when you did the butter knife? No. Okay. At that point, I don't even think they were reaching the edge of the pot yet. Yeah. And so I feel a little bit of overwatering back there. So now they go from a one into a five. I'm, there's a, that was a huge, huge step. And, I, and I'll tell you why. Now that we've gone through all this, and then I'm going to run out to it. I'm going to, I got something else to do. I'm going to run into another phone call. So I'm going to, I want to show you like specifically. Um, now, because of all of that, the problem that you ran into, I mean, let's just forget watering, forget anything else. The problem that you run into is, is if the, is if the plant is in the center of the pot, then the problem that you have is the problem that you run into is that everything else that's in that area everything nope everything else uh, when you look at this area uh, okay when you look at this area the plants are in the center of the pot when you look at this picture you're throwing 99 percent of the light at the media so you take the same light and you throw most of it at the media because and this is the one reason and this is why I am the grow boss, because center to center, your plants are, because center to center, your plants are so far apart that all area, not the plant, is greater than area of the plant. Now, let's forget overwatering light, anything else. If you took all of these plants and you went from a one to a three, you would have been able to fit all of these plants in like in like this much space. Yeah, 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 right. So you would have concentrated the light by almost twice. So your light's thin. It's a huge amount of water. Listen, I totally appreciate the call. I'm going to finish it up and get on to something else. Um, uh, the light gets thinner. The space gets greater. And you lose, listen, it doesn't matter what light was. We could work this same data backward for an LED, a CMH, an LEC. We could work it in any direction we wanted. But the reality is light is the fuel. And if you take your octane and you throw it over a greater area, you get less intensity. So what I'm suggesting in all cases is that you have to have the right size bucket under the right size light, under the right size plant, at the right time, with the right amount of water. All right, you got to turn down your computer to the right volume. 916, turn your computer down. Hello? Yes. Good morning. Hey, Joe Bot. Hey. You might call on your show. Yes, sir. Hey, qu I have a question. I talked to you on your line about two weeks ago, and we are talking about trellises. And Hotline? And that Hotline? Picture. Sorry. said that my trellis wears... We're talking yeah, on the hot. Line. Sorry, okay. We're at the, the paid, the paid one, the paid one. Paid so, hotline. I'm working, okay. I'm working on this trellis. I, I was working on this trellis. You said my squares are kind of big. I said maybe, maybe like two tops in every square because they're so big. So I sent you a picture, just called big trellis squares. I don't know if you could just kind of look at that and see. Sure. If, um, if I need just to switch that trellis net out and go to a smaller trellis net, because my concern is. Is I'm putting all these tops, like I, let's say I do two tops in every square as it's, as this trellis is going up, are the buds going to get so weighted down that they're going to they're going to tip over? Okay, so let's let's because I'm looking at big trellis squares and it gives me all sorts of patio garden stuff. All right, so let's just take it a step back. <laughs> How big are the squares? Six inches. I sent on your email. 
I sent I sent it on your email, your uh, your uh, Yahoo email. Yahoo. All right. Um, are you Petite Princess? Are no. you okay? Down. All right. No. Oh, so are you are you the gym? Oh yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I yeah. see it in the subject. Okay. Okay. So I'm looking at. Okay. Give me one sec. I'll, I'll open this up so we can all see it. Um. Okay. Let's see. Which one are you? Um. I sent you two. Actually. Okay. I, 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 think, I think the first one I didn't. Uh, I didn't label it, so I just sent you back one, so you could actually find it if you took my call. Okay. Got it. If I took your call. Okay. Um, okay. So petite princess, this is the one where we were poking at. Uh, I was poking a little at with the, uh, perfectly manicured, uh, IR block garden yesterday. Uh, she sent over an email thanking me and we're going to just, okay. So we'll get into that in a sec. Okay. Let's open up this picture now. And okay, so those those squares look like they're six inch squares. How big yeah. are they? I, I believe they are six inch squares. Okay, I said you needed two tops because your plants are so small. Oh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just getting bedroom out. Okay, I was making sure. I'm like, guys, I won't stop. I'm, I'm questioning this. So I'm like, oh, I'll just send you a picture to make, you know, I'm, I'll just keep vegging it out until I fill it all up then. So I'm still, uh, I'm still vegging. I'm like three weeks, going in three weeks into it. So. Well, listen, I got to say one, I appreciate you uh, letting that joke slide. So let me show you what I want <laughs> you to do. So um, let, I'm going to put up, okay. the, I'm going to, I'm going to put up the reference of I'm going to put up, I mean, I always, I listen, I like using the same pictures all the time. Um, I could find more pictures. Yeah. I don't like doing it because I got to tell you, I, the same, you do the same, you find what works, you do the same thing over and over. And that's why after, that's why I'm always afraid of doing the show because you listen to seven shows and all of a sudden you realize, dude, it's the same show. It's the same questions. So I really try to stick to these because if you guys hear it a couple times, I know you like me probably need to hear it a couple times. And so, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of why I adopt the attitude I have on the show because listen, it's, you know what I mean? It's builder dudes. I mean, the petite princess says, um, by the way, I'm not actually a builder, just somewhat OCD. Listen, OCD just stands for optimal crop disease. What's optimal crop disease if nothing but a builder? <laughs> So listen, petite princess, I appreciate it, but congratulations, but you're a builder, you know, I'm just saying, um, okay. So what I want to point out in this picture is, is look at, um, okay. So let me pull a, let's get a color. Look at the size of this, this, this top right here. And this is pretty common. Look at the size of this top. I'm pretty sure that's one top right there. Look at the size of this top right here. Okay. Now we're going to open. Now my no, advice. I've been bending them over and putting them under the trellis. <clears throat> okay. Not, but you're not headed in the direction I was going with that comment. Ooh, that was very friendly okay, of me. Okay, that was very friendly of the grow boss. I'm getting good at this. The new friendlier grow boss. Listen, what I'm, like what, <laughs> what I'm trying to get at here is that there is an enormous amount of uh, it just in the end there is an enormous amount of okay so i'm gonna like live okay there's an enormous amount of open squares here so i don't care what size plant you have i just want to point out there's a bunch of opens and a bunch of opens and a bunch of opens 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 all these opens look at the floor you can see the floor all i'm saying is if you're trying to grow dope in a tent <laughs> showing the the light the floor is a 100 percent loss not just that it also by definition means you have too much light and if we look back 
to to right if we look back to here that was my whole point when we do a top view of this last caller's five gallon buckets if we're like in this picture we're like above the light because his light was so low in his tent you know what i'm saying and so <clears throat> you can you can look down and what am i seeing i'm seeing soil what the fuck you're throwing light at the soil you're not just throwing light at the soil you're yeah. this guy here is throwing this guy's not throwing light at the floor. I mean, you look at that side, that wall right there. There's, you don't need panda. You don't need anything reflective on that wall, man. You just add two more bulbs. That's why when you guys are like, oh my God, I got the panda film, the mylar. I've got 12 CFLs and 30 feet of mylar. Oh my God. And, and, and okay. So let's go back to your picture and I just, okay, so I'm going to make it a little bigger. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's grab a circle. And dude, this top looks kick-ass. I don't think this top looks like that top or that this top looks like that top or that this top looks like that top. Also, I would like to point out, now that I'm looking at this picture, that there seems to be an enormous area over here that doesn't have any light. What's up? Uh, it's on a mover. That's why. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Okay. Um, I would have to say that I think your light's too far. And I'll, okay. tell, I'll tell you why. Because usually, usually, and let's go, I'm going to save this. Uh, can't save this. So I'm going to open up. Let me. Okay. So anyway, I was, wait, I, let me finish the thought. I was uh, showing you this picture and then I tell the guy, don't do anything, but add three more plants. Boom. It's like good looking hair club for men. I mean, okay, dude, I just love, I just love good looking hair club for men. So this is a guy. This is a guy who I think, uh, is this the spray paint guy? Oh, these are just hair club solutions. Oh, no, we, we want his uh, spray paint hair. Spray paint. Ah, uh, no, that's just a bunch of people spray painting their heads. That's not going to work for me. Okay, so <laughs> they used to have this product that it sprayed these fuzzy things onto your hair. So it made your hair look thinner. I mean, more full. So it looked, you know what I mean? It didn't even have to change the color. It just made it look more full. Like eyelashes for your hair. Okay. My observation here is that, is that the, you have to, when you look at that garden, I mean, there are just, and, and there's still, and I'll, I'll show you just for reference. Let's just look at how this garden turned out. There you go. So when you look at all of these tops, I just want to point out that there are still, and, and think about it like a college program, like on a four-year program. If somebody drops out in semester one, they lose that money for the entire program. There's open squares here, but usually what happens is the plants around the edges get tall one of them will shoot up and it happens it happens a lot because here is i love this one don't save if you look along the back here blam there's the phenomena again and you could see narrowly happening back here a little right here in the corner but it tends to be you can see that they're leaning in so when people say when i look at my plant how will i know i'm just saying that and from the plant's perspective, even in this picture, they could probably use a little less light. I will tell you that less light in this particular case would probably change the density of the bud. These lights are probably just right. They're probably too much for the plant because you can see how dead even it is right across the top. But then here's, you know, right along the edges, you find instances where the plants are getting tall. And even though it doesn't look like much, it's still... Um, a, a moderate percentage and it's definitely around the edges. So are they getting too much light? I would have to say that for this particular guy and this particular yield, he was kicking ass. So he pushed the plant too far to get the results that he wanted without killing them because here these plants are leaning in so they could take a little more. So I'm just saying that that looks sort of like the boundary layer to me. 
And in terms of when we look at your picture, I'm just suggesting that the boundary layer is is still off by quite a bit. Um, is still off. Sorry, dog. Sorry, Rob. There you go. Good dog. Sorry. Stuff was in front of my dog's water. Um, so I, I would have to say that you would literally have to puff this up to almost double because once okay. we talk about okay. these squares now, the square, but like, here's why though. It, there's 20% of squares seem empty. Now, this is better than the other picture, uh, but I would like to point out, I would like to go just a little bit deeper into that. There's one other perspective because you're closing in on it because you're willing to, you're willing okay. to accept the knowledge and, and work toward it because you can see it getting better because you're calling me back again. So I know just by your actions that yeah. you and I are moving forward. Okay, <clears throat> this is uh, this dude's garden with with uh this is this dude's garden with a, a profile shot so we had made comments on this before so this is the same shot sans the notes this is six plants and then remember when then when we went to nine plants instead the top looked like this but imagine that the garden is going to get but it's still the plants are still 10 inches deep worth of canopy and you look at the legs and i think the legs reflect that now one of the things i always tell you guys is you always got to watch for how long you veg versus the legs of your plant versus if you have a problem because in all cases even if you fix the problem your plant was getting taller the whole time it was getting better so you decrease the light slow your roll stop watering Quit killing your shit, leave it the fuck alone, and now it's growing like a weed. That's great, but it took four weeks, and the plant's a foot and a half taller. So if you're in the same size space, and you're supposed to finish four feet from the light, and it's a foot and a half taller, suddenly you have to watch that. Suddenly you're in the position like uh, for the... Um, for trellising your plant... Like in this video, how I show you how to trellis a plant. And these ones will fill up these. Yeah, look at that. And this, this one started off, if you remember, this one started off this. Wait, wait, big in the tent. It started off like this. I'm just saying I took a almost, I took a 26 inch canopy and I made it one inch tall. That was a 26 inch canopy and you watched me squish it into literally one inch. So all I'm saying is, is you really, and, and even here, even in, even in, uh, even in this canopy, I just want to point out that the addition of three plants, no, no change in nutrients, no change in light. No change in watering schedule because the buckets are the same buckets. The plants are the same size. All I'm saying is a little more bush, a little more bud. You see what you see? You see what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. Now totally. you, you could literally start flowering if you just added two plants. Now it's not only those last 20% of the holes in your trellis, it's also the depth of that canopy because you want you, you know, your buds need to be this long to get that weight. So what you have to do is you have to start flower with a one foot canopy. So you're going to have based on light. If you have a four by four, you'll start flowering with a two by four, one foot deep worth of canopy. And if you have a 600 watt, you'll start with a four by four, one foot deep worth of canopy. And if you have a thousand watt, you'll start with a five by five, one foot deep worth of canopy. You see that you get that like it's a power band for shifting the gears. Yep. Yep. All right. Did that answer your question? He did. One, I'm gonna. You said that like, you think the light might be a little too far. Did I, did I pick that out this conversation. Um. Yeah, I think, or you don't have enough light. So let's go back to your picture and you and you tell me how much light is is on this. What's that uh, light it's, on the? It's an LEC 315. An LEC three, 315. LEC 315. And how far away is it? Uh, it's. Well, I got it. Almost all the way, well, not all the way to the top. So I would say probably like three and a half feet. 
Okay. Almost I four. would I would say that what's the size of the tent? This is it's a it's a two by four. It's, a, it's, it's almost like a four by three to be honest with you. It's like okay. two by eight by four. Okay. Is it a Sun Hut Easy eighty or something? Yeah, in my opinion. Oh, okay. you know I wish I could tell. I don't know. Okay. I bought it from the hydro. I bought it from the hydro store, so okay. go ahead. I think you need more light. So you got a light rail light mover? Is okay. that the one? Is it a light rail light mover? I, I do. Yep. For, for your book. Okay, perfect. I would say that, that that light should probably be a foot closer. But I would just like to point out that at a foot closer, if you filled up that canopy, you would have to go to more light and flower. Um, is your light, if you bought a 615, is it a dim, Is it 630? Is it it's dimmable or no? No, it's not. A, it's just a, it's not a six thirty. Um, okay. I, I was the guy that called you yesterday about the three fifteens, the LECs versus the four hundred watt HPSs. Okay. So I think I, think I was kind of on the same track you were here. Uh, cause I'm thinking I'm, I get, I'm, I might I'm losing eighty five watts right here. So I don't know if I have enough light or not. No. Yes and no. Let me. I'll tell you what my comment. What was you tell me? What was my com, What was my compliment on the LEC yesterday? What was my compliment? It it spread the light out. It, it, I remember. I remember you saying that's it spread right. The light out. Uh, that's really right. Really fast. In those. Really fucking fast. Look at that. That light pattern is edge to edge. I'm drawing it on the thing right now. Yeah. I didn't even think to look. Look at that reflective line in that crease. Look at how bright that is. Yeah. Now, that he said that light yeah. was, you said that light was three and a half feet away? Yeah, almost, almost, yeah, three and a half, almost close to four. I mean, it's, okay. it's, it's, eight, it's eight foot tall tent. Okay, so now without killing your plants, you can just you can just bring the light to three feet away, and I bet you would get okay. better results. I also think that by moving this by moving this light line down to here, I think you're going to capture okay. all um, all of all of this light. But it's not just that light, because if you think about it, it's that light times times this space. Like, you know, it's not just that light in that area. It's also that light in that area times everything all the way across. So I think you're going to get literally like a 35% increase in light by going down a foot. And I think that's probably where you're going to want it. I would also like to suggest that that you're moving your light too far because light rail light movers will tell you you just throw light in the shadows but you sir have created oh, okay. a shadow condition you are 100 okay. percent in totality oh look at that grow boss throwing in a recent reference oh yeah so <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying that you've gone too far um, y okay. you would solve this technically, even if you lowered the light, you would still be in the shadow, which means you no longer are in the position of lowering the light. You, sir, are using up all the light and you would have to go to a 615 at the same height. Okay. Because I think all the right. 615 That's is going to get you a wider spread. I think the 615 okay. is going to get you... Uh, hopefully what I'm looking for is your light spread should look like this on one side and then like this on the other because okay. because that has a – look, I mean, if you've got one, two, three, four squares wide in the shadow, I've got one square. Uh, I, I just okay. – the light doesn't need to go all the way to the edge. If your plants go all the way to the edge, you really have to watch out to make sure that to make sure that that your light angle that the angle of the light is you just got to watch because here's the hot spot. Now here is the dimmer zone and then anything beyond here is dead for this point. So I'm just suggesting that um, this is pissing them off. 
This is a this is almost a okay. this is an not an overcast, but it's definitely a cloudy day at the beach for your plants several times a day. Now, I just want to point out that it's you look at this picture. <laughs> I would just like to point out that I draw like a child. Um, and so, OK, what I would like to point out is that there isn't anything for me to be to be said about the quantity of nutrients i don't feel like you're killing them with too many newts i don't feel like you're killing them with overwatering. it's the rare bird that doesn't have too much light because you can have or you know because there's so few people get the right light because most people fail most people kill their shit because we got a guy 24 inches plant spread too far a lot of light too close spread out so i'm just saying light's an issue and using your light is like driving a vehicle. Um, you know what? Does that answer your question? Yeah, I mean, I figured when I called you, I figured you were going to beat me up. But now with the fucking light being too high and not enough, i got to be honest with you. <laughs> right? Right? It's, that's not bad, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty, I mean, that's a pretty finesse. Thing. You know what I mean? It even took me a couple of times of looking at the picture and talking to you about it to get there. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. think so I this, proved... This is, my, this is my fourth throw. My fourth throw, my second call, my second call to your, third call to your show and, and, and two, uh, two of your hotline calls. So it's getting there. I just, I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, that's, you know, my wife's looking at it going, ah, those squares look big. You better call the girl boss. <laughs> 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 all right listen let me finish up the let me finish up the explanation i appreciate the call <clears throat> and listen i appreciate the confidence so so my observation is you have to drive whatever vehicle you have you have to drive that vehicle appropriate for that motor because if you have oh shit I can't seriously be losing a battery. Oh my God, look at that. Hang on, let me get another battery. Um, yeah, if you're driving a four cylinder, you're just not gonna drive it like an eight cylinder, right? Because an eight cylinder, you're gonna keep the RPMs low. Otherwise you're just gonna bust the tires loose and you're not gonna be able to maintain any kind of traction. So my observation is you just don't drive a four like a six, like an eight. You don't, just don't drive a car with a turbo, the same as one with a supercharger. Okay. All right. All right, get super oxygenated because I'm going to have to hold my breath while I do this transplant. All right, we first got to mark it. All right, so we're taking out the battery so we know what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, got to take some vital signs. Listen, I got enough fucking problems with this mic that I don't have to okay no safety switches it looks like it just flips open ready <sighs> let's see we can do this with um, uh, some uh, oh yeah oh uh, yeah this guy love that you are the master no no okay <sighs> gotta get back in focus gonna have to make this Boom. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. I just need some good um, ER music. Ah, see, switching windows pauses the video. So, okay. All right, I visualize the target. Uh, All right, grow boss, grow boss. Oh yeah, that's what happens when you're a professional. <laughs> ah, who doesn't love ER? I remember I was like, uh, <laughs> before everything got so brutal, it was like just the right amount of, uh, was, like, was that like late nineties, like just the right amount. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah, I made him famous. Oh, there's the actual one. That's the one I was going for. Oh, yeah. 
Who didn't love that? <laughs> oh, no, that's not the one. Boo. Okay. All right, so the batteries are changed. The show can continue. Ah, yes. <clears throat> so, the number is 84 Grow Boss. Let's see what's been happening on the live stream. Um, oh, the Grow Boss. Hey, I thought that was pretty good. The Tech Boss. Listen, I, I um, what what datas um i'll tell you that um i used to have a radio show called it jason and if i can't answer your question you'll probably have to call bill gates and did i would take calls just like this and i did this on a radio show and i was i, I was a network engineer microsoft systems engineer i'm microsoft systems trainer i could train the people that do microsoft i can subnet I don't think I could subnet without having to work it out again, but I could subnet. So I'm just saying, I, I've got. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you what I. I'll, t I'll tell you what. Whoop, Dedas. This is my. Check this out. Okay, so this is my badass setup. See that? Okay, those two. See that camera? That monitor way back there? That's showing the same thing as this story. Oh yeah. You know what? I have been working on this. We had the guy coming yesterday to finish. Oh, listen. So when I walk around the store with my super awesome cam stick, there's the computers that I look at, right? That one. Then there's this one. Oh, yeah. Haven't quite worked out unwinding the cord yet, but I'm getting close. So, oh, man. Sorry. That's my desk. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that should get me far enough. So listen, I've got my walkabout stick. I can, no matter where I am and no matter what inventory I show you, I can walk around anywhere in my store. And I can see what I'm looking at. Boom, there I am up there too. We run videos on that during the day now. So I can show you my inventory. And you know what I mean? There's my desk. So listen, I'm just saying I've got like seven monitors and, and, and six cameras and you know, you hit a button and the live stream stops. God damn it. So I'm either going to have to charge you for the show and hire someone to do it or, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> um, so that's uh, so I used to answer computer calls just like this. I had like a little network engineering business that I ran. So I got to goof off with my kids when they were growing up. Yeah, that was one of the things. So I'll tell you what I'm very good at. I don't really particularly care what it is I'm doing. I'll tell you what I'm very good at. I'm very good at understanding the best way to do something. I don't really care what that is. I don't really care what it is that I'm doing, whether it's like my own advertising platform or videos or in an ambulance. That was why nursing was so frustrating because just carrying out orders, there was no bad. I was just doing a, someone else's bidding. Polyploids. Um, okay. You want to know about polyploids? I've heard this. Now, polyploid is a many ploid. Polyploid, consisting of, of more than two homologous, homologous chromosomes. Uh, polyploid organism. All right, let's look it up. Polyploid cells and organisms are those containing more than two paired homologous sets of chromosome. Most species which, whose cells have nuclei those are eukaryotes. Eukaryotes have a nuclei. They produce their own energy. They have mitochondria. They are a more complicated cell than a prokaryote. Okay, meaning they have two sets of chromosomes. That's um, a di diploid. Two sets of chromosomes, one inherited from each parent. Polyploidy 
is found in some organisms and especially common in plants. In addition, polyploidy occurs in some tissues of animals that are otherwise diploid, such as human muscles, endospecies who do not have a nuclei or prokaryotes. Maybe polyploid organisms are seen in large bacterium. With respect to a cell, most eukaryotes have diploid somatic cells, but produce gametes, right, eggs and sperms, by meiosis, that's the division. A monoploid is only one set of chromosomes, and the term is usually, and the term is usually only applied to cells or organisms that are usually diploid. Male bees and other hymnoptera, which now suddenly seems like we're going down a feminized path maybe, for example, Unlike animals, plants and multicellular algae have life cycles with two alternating multicellular generations. The gametophyte is haploid and produces gametes by mitosis, cell division. And the sporophyte generation is diploid and produces spores by meiosis. Now, meiosis, remember, is when the diploid cells pull apart and they're either going to go through mitosis or meiosis. And then the, uh, the sporophyte is and then there's my, right, mitosis. Okay, so it produces gametes by mitosis. The sporophyte produces them through meiosis. So it's a numerical change in the set of chromosomes. Organisms in which a particular set of chromosomes or chromosome segments is under or overrepresented. A nuploid, which means not or good or fold. And suddenly you've got a fold in or an additional... Uh, chromosome in a third position so the two are spinning and then one bonds here um, so a new pulled the dis distinction between a nuploidy and polyploidy is that a nuploidy reverse refers to a numerical change in part of the chromosome set where polyploidy refers so we talk about down syndrome on the 23rd chromosome that's a numerical in part of the chromosome that is an a nuploidy polyploidy refers to three you would need three sets of chromosomes so it would be xxy for instance okay so now now we know those two we know how cells divide and we know polyploidy polyploidy and a nuploidy now polyploidy may occur due to abnormal cell division either doing mitosis or commonly during the metaphase in meiosis. So remember, things pull apart. They they get down to their nucleus. They end up with. Um, okay, so suddenly we're going to run into a word that you guys will want to know about. So polyploidy cell division in the metaphase in meiosis. How they pull apart and how they pull the genes in a recombination sequence to create the next generation in meiosis. In addition, it can be induced by plants and cell cultures by some chemicals. So, okay, just let me tell you what mitosis and meiosis is now. So, okay, so in mitosis, the cells replicate a chromosomes. So they do, they're separated into two and then they're replicated during the interphase which is the DNA is replicated. So they're, so in mitosis, they're replicated in metaphase meiosis. Okay, so meiosis separates them. The, it's similar to mitosis, though its genetic results are different the end result is a production of four haploids. Okay, so it cuts them and it takes them and separates them. That's two. Then it breaks them in half from two haploids, each consisting of two sister chromatids produced on the most on the in meiosis. The four steps of meiosis: prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Okay, so it breaks it down, divides them up, and replicates them. So polyploidy refers to a numerical change in the whole set of chromosomes. Organisms in which a particular chromosome or chromosome segment is under or over represented is said to be a nuploid. Okay. Polyploid is down. Now there are too many chromosomes in total. So now there is XXY, not XY with three on the 23 or the 21st, or something along those lines. So, 
the, the, that's why I'm getting to this because polyploidy is too many. In addition, it can be induced in plants and cell cultures by some chemicals. The best known is colchicine which can result in chromosome doubling, though its use may have other less obvious consequences as well, or zeline will also double the existing chromosome content. Okay, so now we're talking about changing the DNA of the plants. And I and now the word coclean, oh, that'd be nice if you, uh, if Wikipedia had like, maybe like a little pronunciation for it. Colsicin, bah, da. Ah, that's a tough one, and I'm usually pretty good at that. Col, colchic, Uh, bah. So now, now we're we're here. Okay, so now what we're talking about is somebody had asked about talking more about. Um, have to induce mutations, so. There we go. So colsicine is a medication most commonly used to treat gout, a toxic. It is a toxic natural product and a secondary metabolite originally extracted from plant. So investigative uses. So that's uh, so if you want to change the DNA of your plants, uh, yeah, there you go. That's one way to do it. Maybe you could make. Uh, I just, I know exactly what you can do. It'll turn out, you know, it'll turn out. It'll turn, it'll turn out just, it'll turn out just, oh uh, yeah. How could it not turn out? I think this is going. How could it not turn out like Mephesto's four-assed monkey? Um, God, who doesn't love Mephesto? Mephesto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. So that's what happens when you're going to genetically change the plant. There's a monkey with four asses. Boom. There it is. You're going to have a pissed off four ass monk of plant. <laughs> anyway, the number is 84 Grow Boss if you want to call. It's 1020. It was an interesting show yesterday. So I'll tell you what was interesting about it. Because if you watch yesterday, it was the first time I was able to have a customer come on the show. I don't know if you could hear the audio right. I got to go back and listen. But they were super proud of them growing and whatever it was they were doing. So I thought that was pretty good, right? Because if you remember, we had talked about uh, me doing a uh, hydro hustle as a, as a show like uh, Pawn Stars. Uh, I showed you yesterday that we put together that hydro hustle video that we made in the store a little while back. Yeah, so there you go. That was uh, woo, that was in two iterations ago. Like every summer, I uh, I like go through a uh, re uh, redo my redo my store phase. Ah, me and Chuck look two years, three years younger. Ah, so much hair. So the number is eighty four Grow Boss. If you have any questions about growing cannabis or smoking cannabis, or about my Grow Books equipment guide or equipment that you're using, otherwise. Um, Otherwise, I would just like to uh, go over this particular comment. And this is why I say a lot of times, it, it, a lot of times, like almost all the times, it, it's just so, gr the problems are so grower related. Like the last guy, it was a finesse thing. I mean, he ran out of light. I mean, the problem is more light. When do you ever hear me say more light? I'm just saying his ability to you know absorb the information, accept it. So I get this, uh, I get Sam, who decides he, he's pretty smart. <clears throat> so seems to me, Sam says, not using AC at all and draw cold air and draw cold outside air to vent your tents is way more efficient. I think 
is way more efficient. I don't think the benefit of being able to use CO2 is worth it, at least not at least when you're not growing on a large scale. Um, listen, I don't think CO2 has anything to do with the scale of your grow. What I'm going to tell you is, is if you have a sealed garden and light water CO2 equals sugar and oxygen, then what are you going to do for CO2? Because if you, if it takes C to make the C and sugar, then how are you going to get the C without the CO2? So all I'm saying is, I don't think the perspective thing. So my observation is, what's considered large scale? What's the temperature outside? And what's the actual benefit? I mean, if you can add CO2, it's 25%. Usually it pays for the air conditioner. It just seems to me, Sam, that a lot more variables than an opinion from a guy with no experience goes into that decision. And so what exactly do you know about my level of experience? And then he goes in to tell me, obviously cooler outside temps are required. I'll give you that. I'm sure it's totally doable this way. Though in most, in most of the U.S., I'm sure it's totally doable this way, though, in most of the U.S. during most of the year. As Mr. Groboss, you didn't consider these variables yourself. I, actually, I did because while I don't put it in the text because, listen, I get this guy five times a day on other videos. I mean, this is not the only doing this. So, you know, this is a cut and paste thing because it's always the same thing. But I actually did consider it because if you have a sealed room, you add CO2. So did I consider the outside temps? Yes, they, the window AC units work better than the two duct units. The, uh, once your outside gets more than 100 degrees, you should probably dim your lights. There, the outside is considered. You hear me say that all the time. What I'm suggesting is that these are all interpretations of the equipment. So if you're the kind of individual that comes to, that comes to a hydro store, does any of your projects that says, I wanna know the best way, or you use those, like I had a guy yesterday ask me which the best soil was. I said, listen, if you want to water more, buy, uh, uh, buy something with more perlite in it. If you want to water less, buy something that's, you know, pure because it holds the water. Oh, which would you do? Well, I hate watering, so I buy this one. And I just pointed to Fox Farm. Why? Because Fox Farm's the number one selling soil in the store. So how can it possibly be me? So he's like, okay, so I'm in a one. Uh, how often should I be watering it? I said, you know, don't let them dry out too much. But if you have to water more than twice a week, you're in too small of a bucket. You should transplant. So he goes, so I should transplant and water all the time. What? I should transplant and water all the time? I mean, I, I don't know how to answer a question like that, right? I mean, like, w w with any honesty, I know how to answer a question like that. Yes. Yes. Yes, you should just water all the time. So when they come back and say, you told me to water all the time, I, no, 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 you told me. And I just said, yes, I guess you water too much. You know what I mean? So what did I say? I said, I have no idea what that means. What does water all the time mean? Like all the time you just hold a hose in there. You do one ounce an hour. Like some people, what does water all the time mean? I'm like, you're going to go from a one to a five gallon bucket. I mean, if you're watering twice a week in a one, you know what I mean? That's one gallon. If you're going to have four more gallons, then you're going to be watering, right? Now it's four, you're going to be watering once every three weeks. That's why when I get the guy earlier in the, in the show says, says, Hey, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, in a five gallon bucket. And I'm like, you're in a five gallon bucket in a what with a what, what? You just can't be at 2000 RPMs in any vehicle. It just doesn't work like that. Somebody says to you, how fast should I be going? You say 35. They go, but I'm at a red light. Oh, you go zero. They said, but I'm on the freeway. And you go, I hate you. <laughs> yeah, listen, hey, uh, um, who, who just said, why are you trying to introduce mutations? Listen, I don't, uh, I have no idea why somebody, uh, and so have you seen mutated massive buds? Jesus, let's please hope. Let's please hope 
That's the name of a strain rather than a process. Oh, somebody said Growboss has a point. Matey mate. Uh, sweet. Um, you know, somebody said, can you speak on leaf stripping? Yeah, I suppose you got to match the canopy to the light such that you're not throwing light at the floor or too high up on the walls of the tent or the space that you're in. Oh, oh fuck. Missed the call. Okay, so I was ah, good. That would have totally saved my ass. All right. Um, I've been on Twitch. They show like security camera picture, nothing else. No talking audience, nothing. Um, also, um, yeah, so I was hoping to get like, uh, maybe like a, uh, that hydro, a little, a little hydro hustle store going because, you know, buying, listen, if nobody cares, you know what I mean? I'll just run like a little Pawn Stars thing. I'll just add a couple more cameras, whatever it is I got to do to, we'll just put up a couple. <laughs> we'll just mic the store. It's brilliant. So I like that. Uh, so what are you guys talking about? BS on forever buds. Oh my God. There's just so much information to take in. Give your plants the meat sweats. Oh, and of course, if you're watching the video, I always appreciate it. If you like the video and thumbs up on the channel, no wait, thumbs up, bah, like the video, like the channel, like the videos, watch the videos, support my advertisers. You see them rotating here in the corner. Ah, so really what I am is I'm a diagnostician. I am very good at solving problems. That's what I do very well. Listen, I, I, I hate, hate growing. Oh my God. It is so slow. It is so painful. And I've done it so many times. It is so much work at some point. I mean, I know people gripe at me because, oh, they're like, oh, you don't even grow. But I'm like, listen, at some point you end up, you end up, you know what I mean? Being like a sports reporter after playing in the league. 775, good morning. Get me back on track. Morning. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Hey, I got a couple of questions about fox killing. Okay. I know you touched on it earlier in the show, um, but I'm wondering, is it three things? Is it heat stress? Um, I think you said letting it go too long, or is there a, a possibility like maybe the genetic isn't stable yet? Okay, so let me, let's just, let's just, let's just start. Okay, listen, you threw out a big word there, okay? So what is the genetics okay. are not stable yet? You tell, you tell us, what does that mean to you? Uh, just maybe like it was the first time it was crossed over and hasn't been bred back into itself. Bred back into itself. Listen, I'm telling you, it feels like it feels like you're getting dangerously close to using it seems like you're getting dangerously close to using the word in the definition. Okay. So, I'm pulling in okay. I'm I'm pulling up pictures of foxtailing. Dude, that is super extreme. Okay. I've seen it like this, and usually in something like this, you almost want to think it's gone too long. Okay. Now, so I, the the only I only oh. have one one that's doing it, and that was the only reason why I was wondering. Okay, so when you say one, one out of how many? Yep, yeah. uh, six. So you did six plants the same time, watered them the same time, the same buckets, the same light? Yep, I'm finished uh, flowering in 400 uh, three-gallon pots. Okay, listen, you got to, I mean, the only thing I can offer you at this point is based on the data that we have, which is one out of six, based on, with no mm -hmm. information of where your things came from, what would have to happen is a couple of things. One, you would have to take okay. clones from that fox-tailed plant. You would have to take clones, and you'd have to take like 50 clones. 
You'd have to take clones from okay. all the other plants. You would have to keep them separate. You would have to grow and veg and flower them. And you would have to count how many foxtails you got. Because at the moment, we have a one in six chance of getting a foxtailed plant. Because there are some points mm -hmm. that we can't ascribe to. We may very well have to ascribe to a genetic and if you're going to talk about okay. unstable, my question would be is, um, it, it would be if that flaw hasn't been bred out of it. Now, that's, I just, I mean, it's a hell of a word for people to throw around without understanding that what right. we're trying to do is create a field of red roses with no whites and no pinks. Because if you remember, if you remember the... If you remember the Mendelssohn chart, uh, if what we're talking about here is this, is, is dominant recessive genes. And so in this particular case, these are ni neither an, an aneuploid or a polyploid because they are two genes. When we talk about the genome, we talk about the genetic sequence, which in this case is ours, and we talk about the, that's the genotype, and we talk about the phenotype, okay. how it expresses itself. So if two genetic small r's give you a white rose, and a, then you get a one in four, or you get, if you change this, you would get, if you had to add a row, um, you'd have to add two, it would be like nine possibilities or 27 or something like that um so at some point the possibilities continue to increase however um you have to then combine them with the bottom with the y so you get reds red dominance red recessives you get yellows yellow dominance what wh whites and what i'm suggesting is that the relationship between the combination of these two boxes tell us if we're going to have reds whites or pinks and that we're going to have two reds one white one pink so what I'm suggesting is, is that in terms of this, we would have to end up with all big R's in your case to suggest that uh, we don't get anything other than that. Now, my question always is, if you had a bud like this, um, if you had a bud like this and somebody just cut off the foxtails, would you be able to tell or would they just look like more buds? Because... You know, there are, there are apparently different levels of foxtailing here. And until I saw these pictures... Yeah, I mean, no, it wasn't as extreme. It wasn't as extreme as those pictures you showed me. I was just more curious as to, like, uh, why, I guess. You know, it's not it's not even that bad right there, that that one that's uh, got the purple foxtails on there. It's not even that bad. It's just more at the very top cola, I imagine. Because I, I didn't do a scrog. I just grew six. I didn't scrog them out, so I only have like one main cola. But you can see how the term stable, if you have one, the, mm -hmm. the question really would be is you would have to, the only way to determine them would be to grow them all out and count the instability. And then you would have to right. breed out the, it would have to be bred out. The other thing is, let's say okay. that, let's say that this one got attacked in a way that the other ones didn't or this one was in a position with the light that the other ones weren't or something happened to this one because uh, you know when i uh, you know that one plant because i'm i'm just saying that um it's a it's a i think you go too far sir with your conclusion based okay. on the data that we have okay all right is that, that is that a sense. satisfactory answer Call them out and see. Yeah, it is. I mean, it makes sense. Clone it out and see if it really is unstable or if I just got the, the, the freak in the bunch. What I would really, since all you need <clears throat> is a denial, you don't actually need a confirmation. I would say don't, I would say clone a plant, a good plant, and never think about it again unless it happens again. Okay. Why chase it? Why chase good it? Answer. Why chase what you don't want? Right. Yeah, All why right, chase thanks. what you don't want? Yes, sir. Thanks for the call. That's what I'm saying. Like in a lot of cases, one of the things that I tell you guys is 
listen, it's not always worth going through the hassle to save it. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's better to just let it go and start over. Okay. You guys, I really don't. Um, uh, yeah. So the number is 84 Grow Boss. <clears throat> there are all sorts of fun and exciting things to talk about that aren't cannabis. But, um, oh, I'm going to the MJ BizCon is coming up in a couple months. I have a booth there. We've been uh, selling the shit out of books online. NRO systems and meters. I have, uh, I have to produce another video. So, oh, my schedule. Because I keep getting emails about the Bushmaster. Ah, okay. By the end of this year... I will have finished the MJ BizCon and what I believe should be all of my videos. I have to produce a Turbo Clone video. On they want a video, a commercial style video where I'm actually, oh, I'm act doing the, oh, this is the Grow Boss and this is why I sell this product and no other, and I show you comparisons with other products. So I'm gonna have to pull. Oh, phone call, so much better. <laughs> Nine five one. Good afternoon. Hey, Grill Boss. Hey, man. Um, I just have a quick question. I have a four foot able T5 that I'm trying to use for veg. And I seem to not be able to find the correct um, light disc to my, to my clones when I initially put them into the pot. My clones are about, I would say, no more than four to five inches, between three and four to five inches. But I put the light away. Uh, two feet away at 200 watts and it seems like it's just too much to least curl. I raised it up to three feet and it was good for about a week, but then the, the leaves started uh, curling again. So I'm raising the light to now four feet, but it just seems like I'm raising the light way too high. And I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. Okay. Hang on. Hang on one sec. Hang, hang on one sec. Hydroponics. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter if you add bush load with your nutrients or you use it by itself. What are you trying to accomplish? Okay. So when are you going to use it? If you're trying to get the nodes closer together, when are you going to use it? Okay. That second to third week is probably... Second to third week is probably late because you're going to run into the thing where they get pretty stretchy the first couple weeks. What happens like with a bush load or like any pack load butrazole or a PGR, which is a plant growth regulator, what happens is, is it stops the cells from stretching. And when the cells stretch, that's when they get bigger. So let's say you're shopping at Walmart. They get plants that are five, seven and nine inches. Why two weeks later are they still five, seven, nine inches? Because they got sprayed with a light dose of Paclobutrazol before they left. So what I would like to suggest is that you're going to have to do a small amount of experimentation with how you use anything that says it stops stretching versus the relationship of when you use it. Because it actually does two things. If you use it at the start of flower, it stops stretching. If you use it at the end, it's a density. So there's a small amount of experimentation that's going to have to be involved. See what I'm saying? All right, listen, I'm in the middle of something right now. I got a couple of customers in the store. We open at 11. Come on in. All right, bye. Okay. So you had a four foot eight bulb with four bulbs on, and I'm back on the phone call now, 951. <clears throat> you had yeah. four bulbs with, uh, with, 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 uh, your, th with your, I just want to, I just want to open this up. You had four bulbs on. I just want to suggest that, that you, I think you are correct, sir, that four bulbs is a lot of light. So let me give you just a little bit of math on this equation. Let me see what's best to do this. Okay. So you know what? I'm going to practice. Nope. I don't like that one. I'm going to, let's do this one. Sweet. Okay. Um, there's, 
there's a little bit of a math game that you that you have to play and uh and i i tell you guys that you know all light's the same and the spectrum doesn't matter but technically not all light is produced the same so let me show you what what the magic like uh what the magic number is because it literally okay hang on almost done nope too far okay in terms of light there's always that magic number for a for a bulb so ah so there's always that magic number for a bulb so this is that classic hid light this is 600 watts and this 600 watts is like 90,000 lumens right a good bulb whatever it is that's what they're on average advertised the 400 watt version they say is 40,000 lumens so if you double 40,000 lumens you get 80 but if you double the electricity from 400 to 800 that's more than a 600 watt light that's why you always hear 600 watts are the most efficient but no not necessarily why because uh because in the end if you're doing it you might want a thousand or you might want a 400 watt light the thing is that when you have this light this is a two footer a two foot t5 sunblaze uh sunblaze 22 foot 24 watt t5 they're 2000 lumens a two foot bulb is 2000 lumens this is a 16 bulb two footer so it's 32,000 lumens, but each bulb's 24 watts. So that makes this light 400 watts. 25 times 16 is 400 watts. So this light is 400 watts. There are 2,000 lumens each. This is a four foot eight bulb. The thing is, the four foot eight bulb works the same way that the 600, 400 works because this is 24 watts and 2,000 lumens. That's 54 watts and 5,000 lumens. So you double the electricity from 24 to 54, but you two and a half times the light. So I'm just suggesting that when you go from two to four in a T5, it's a magic number like going from four to six in an HID. So those are a couple of things to consider. That's why when I say that you should have literally, so this is your two foot bulb, that's why That's why. That's why when you put this together, it looks like this. Okay, so this is root right. Okay, you have got, so you got your little, you got your tray, you got your clones, you got your, right? It all comes together in terms of it looks like this. And you've got, this is what's going on. This is 24 watts. This just literally gets taped to this. Now, here's what I tell you guys. You can do whatever you want besides this. You can do two lights at this far or four lights at this far or eight lights at this far. I don't care how many lights you do, but here's the math. If a four bulb, if a four foot is two and a half times brighter than this, and this is one foot away, then one of those bulbs should be two feet away. Two bulbs should be three feet away. Four bulbs should be four feet away. Why is your light four feet away from your plants? You probably have a lot of light. If you have a lot of light on a small plant, what's the probability of you crushing that plant with too much light? Very high. That's why I tell you, you can do whatever you want, but I always tell you guys, take this two foot one bulb, tape it to the top, start with a healthy plant, spray it with Clonex mist three to five days before you use it, take your clones, put them in the gel, put them in here, Feed them once with Clonex solution, add the microbes a week later and leave it the fuck alone. I don't, I mean, I've got you doing one thing a week. 
maybe you have to add some water once in the middle of the week. I mean, it's just, all I'm saying is that there isn't really too much beyond just leaving them alone and starting with a healthy plant. So you've got 200 watts worth of light. If we know that they're four foot bulbs, we know you got four, we know they're 5,000 lumens, we know you're at 20,000 lumens. <laughs> 20,000 lumens is 10 times the amount of that two foot bulb. No wonder why four feet seems like it's a lot of light because it is a lot of light. So would you recommend maybe just removing two bulbs that way? Uh, yeah, we're moving that, it. That yeah. The, yeah, we're moving it further away. Would that mess up anything with two the bulbs, light or no? Two bulbs are further away. Yes, I mean, that's that's my point but like i just want to say that i know it doesn't seem like much but removing two bulbs is 50 percent i mean 50 percent is that's a significant amount i mean that's yeah 50, you know what i mean that's if somebody gave you something for 50 percent off suddenly gas was half the price or suddenly you had twice as much money i'm just saying it's a big fucking deal see what i'm getting at yeah. Would that mess up anything with the light? Like um, whatever, like the balance or whatever that they use for the T5 bulb, it won't mess it up if I remove I don't think so. the bulbs? I don't think so because I've been telling okay. people to do it for years and I rarely get, okay. I rarely get returns. That is, that is like the, that is some boots on the ground experience. I've been telling people that for years and I rarely get returns. But you see how it's easy. You see how suddenly, and and I know we talk about lumens and people talk about par and they want to talk about spectrum. But the reality is it really wasn't the par, or maybe the par, I mean the amount of light, but it wasn't the wrong par. And it wasn't, it wasn't, you know what I mean? It wasn't a lot of things. Sometimes it's just using the equipment properly, you know? Okay. Okay, cool. Thanks, Corbin. Yes, the sir. Only question I had. Excellent. Um, Thank you. Yes, let me. Like, I just. Um, um, I just always just think back to, uh, like, Bill Murray's like walking around in Ghostbusters. He's like, uh, um, equipment. Uh, testing for what was it uh zool he's in a, a refrigerator there we go grow boss busters refrid ah. he's just oh she's like do you even know how to use that equipment do you even know how to use that equipment i mean i just love i i love that because in so many cases oh i oh this is great because it's even uh it's like a bootleg copy of it uh, he's just like walking around. He's just pumping that equipment. <laughs> he's like, are you even using that right? I just love that. That was just super funny. Anyway, so it's, um, listen, it's a finesse thing. And when you guys come to the store, in a lot of ways, I see the helplessness because you're looking for but i gotta tell you if you're looking for answers then i need you all to do the exact same thing i mean it goes both ways you can't come to my store and tell me you're experimenting and then and then expect me to help or do anything other than look at you like you're like you're crazy like listen man it's your experiment i'm not in class with you i've done this i i don't there is no well what do you think about i'm like dude listen i saw a lot of nutrients I saw a lot of everything. I think a one part's the easiest. Well, what do you think about this brand? I go, I think a one part's the easiest, man. I don't, you soon, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, if you agree with them, I, I don't, I suppose maybe I should just agree with them and sell them nine bottles of nutrients. I mean, is that what we're talking about here? I mean, it's got to be what we're talking about because you look at some of the, like the nutrient lines, they've got you using like seven bottles. They've got, I mean, you look at uh, the number one selling organic line in my store, like that I found, Vega Matrix. 
They got like seven bottles. There's a big and sticky and a grow and a bloom and an ampit and a hard and fast and a prozyme, a zyme, and uh, maybe they have six. Maybe they got seven. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying that those, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, who was telling me a story? Oh, as we were going over. Anyway, so we were talking about the numbers 84 Grow Boss if you guys want to hang out. I just wanted to go, you know, I just want to point out that it takes a certain type of a person to be a grower. You have to be able to, you have to be able to dedicate five months to your plant. Think about it. Four week seedling, eight week veg, eight week flower. That's five months. You have to plan such that. If you're going to finish at a thousand watt, you're going to finish at whatever you finish at max Q. You're going to be at max nutrient, max plant for bucket size, great right? Cause we're halfway through flower. Now you're going to be at max watering, almost max watering frequency, but you'll definitely be at max nutrients, max plant size. Cause they're ripening at sort of at that point. And then maybe week six, you'll be at max Q. So, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's the point where you'd start the flush. So a little before, because it's a plant. Uh, so if you're not going to be at max light or max nutrients till halfway through flower, how can you be at max light? I just want everybody to keep in mind when you think about growing that the shit that kills your... This is what six bulbs looks like. This is what four bulbs this one right here is what this one uh this one right here is what four bulbs can grow five of those that's at the end of the week so at the start of the week they were looking like this well it's, it's actually 10 days on this picture but at the start of the week it's looking like this and then at the end of the week it's looking like this the light never got moved the plant grew closer See how he starts the plant this far away, and then the plant does this over the course of the week? Right. That way you know the zone is right in there. That's how you determine the light zone. And that's, just so you know, I mean, this is 100 watts. You know, this light here is 100 watts. So that's two of your, so you've got five, he's got 10. His seem to be vegging because, you know, 100 watts is like a veg light to this guy, right? So you've got 200 watts. I mean, that guy's at 200 watts. This guy's two weeks deep into veg with 10 plants. I'm just saying it's a pretty far distance from where you're at to where those images are. 865, good morning. Eight six five. My mic is on. You're on. Excuse me. Oh, there you go. Eight six five. Come on. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good morning. Ten four. I got you, buddy. What can I do for you? Uh, yeah, I was wanting to uh, talk a little bit about sweet leaf nutrients. Uh, if you familiar with them, uh, you or any of your uh, people used them, uh, what kind of experiences have y'all had? All right, so um, are you a grower or a rep? Tell me the truth. A uh, grower, honestly. Oh, okay. Uh, I've got a few videos up myself. I just want to get some uh, examples of some other people's results. Okay, um, um, I've got it pulled up. Uh, oh, this is from Advanced Nutrients? Are you a grower or a rep? No, sweet leaf. I I'm looking... Oh, okay. So no, it's not. Okay. No, it's just next to other advanced nutrients pictures. 616. I just added you to the call. What can I do for you? Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, okay. So I think I've got nine. Okay. Let's look, look at, I think I've got 865 and 616 on the call. I got both of you on the call. Yeah, I am the 616. Okay. Eight six five. I got you. Uh, yeah, man. Okay. Um, I'm I'm trying to find who makes sweet leaf. Sweet leaf. Yeah, that's. I thought that was like a bed. 
Well, I'm looking at this bottle of Dr. Horton. Oh, okay. Dr. Horton. Sweet leaf. Okay. Let's, uh, nope, that's just bad. Taking me back to pictures. Okay. So Dr. Horton sweet leaf. Okay. Sweet leaf nutrients, Dr. Horton. Um, 616, do you know anything about sweet leaf nutrients? Uh, no. All right. What are you, what are you thinking? What are you thinking, 616? Uh, uh, I was going to say, yeah, but I just had a quick question about your book, man. Uh, I just want to say on your book, I know that I was looking at, I don't really personally don't have the book, but I just have uh, what I've seen on your, on your, on your videos. Okay. And I noticed that, I know you said 600 equals so much for, you know, like 600 is a pound and, you know, a thousand is a pound and a half. But I wonder if that 600, when you say the 600 for one pound, is that with that rail added to it because of six, and then you get 25% by adding the rail and then another 25% by adding the CO2. Right. So is that, do you pretty much get the whole one and a half by that way? Or do you only get the whole one for the 600, you know? Oh man. Which one, when I say you get a pound from a 600. Mm -hmm. I, well, is that what I, including like everything? No, you know, like no, no. The there's a period. Plus CO2, no? no, there's a period at the end of the sentence. I said, you get a pound from a 600. That was what I said. Mm. So there's no question about what I said. The question is, why do you think it's something more? Because then I act, what I actually said was, then you get, uh, then you get 25% more from adding a CO2 and 25% yep. more from adding a light yep. rail light mover. Yeah. So you get, I said, you get a yep. pound from a 600 watt. I mean, that was, you get a pound from a 600 watt. That's okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. See, I, I thought I thought it was like the six hundred plus twenty five a piece. I thought, oh, okay. I it like, is. Oh, yeah. See, that's it's, where I'm kind of getting right it now. Is. The six it is. It is. I'm getting one for every six hundred. So, exactly what you get, man. <laughs> exactly right. For a four by four under four plants, one pound. You know what I'm saying? And crank it up. I just cranked, like you said. Uh, I used to do the um, the six hundreds. Uh, I used to crank them at week two a flower, but now I crank them up nearly at, at day twenty eight. You know, five, I mean day twenty nine, day one of week five halfway through flower then i crank up the 600 and i noticed that you do get that whole pound you know what i'm saying <laughs> i noticed that like before it seems like they build up faster but you don't have um it seems like at the end like you said uh, they just have no more oomph towards the end comes you know the last final weeks you already kind of blasted them with the, the full light that you already had you know <laughs> so what size bucket when you go into flower what size bucket are you in I go from a one gallon of veg for about like three to four weeks, depending on the size of it. And then I go straight to a, one, a seven gallon and veg for about another three weeks and flower the rest of the time. Okay. In a smart pot too. Nice. So I wonder if that's pretty much accurate. You know, I'm getting it pretty much on, like I said, I'm getting a pound for the 600. So I'm like, all right, that's cool. You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Listen, I'm glad you're working it out. All right. Let me, I'm still, listen, thanks for the call. I'm still talking to I'm still talking to 865, and I'm trying to find... It says Sweet yeah. Leaf Advanced Nutrients. It, it's S-U-I-T-E. Yeah. Sweet Leaf. Um, Sweetleaf.com. Oh. S-U-I-T-E. Oh, dude, that is awesome. I want that suit. I want the ghillie suit. I want... I want... I want... What else do I want? I want everything on this page. What do I want? That's a, that's a sweet bathing suit. Oh, yeah. There's Dan Colo. Oh, Conor McGregor or something that looks like him. Okay. Let me get rid of this tea. All right. I just got some. All right. There you go. All right. We're going to have to end the show in a minute. Um, okay. What do I think? I bet it has NPK in it. There, that with that little uh, SL logo. That's it right there. Yes, sir. It's sweet leaf, one word. Oh, I'm looking at. Okay. Okay, let's There go. you go. Yeah. Premium plant fertilizer. And the uh, president of the company, I mean, they sent me just a huge, their entire product line, but they didn't only send it to me once. They sent it to me twice. Uh, I've been using it for about a month now. I'm still in veg, both indoors and out, and um, it's comparable. I'm coming from a Technoflora. That's what I had used prior. Uh, my results at this point are comparable. Yeah, I mean, yields based on light. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what I think about that, yields based on light. Listen, 
how you, let me let's take a step back this clearly isn't your first grow is it no so no. why don't you tell me a little bit more something about your experience uh, in my experience, um, I had uh, my, my initial grows, I uh, used uh, Subcool's Super Soil. And I had excellent results both with uh, regular photo periods and with uh, auto flowers. But the problem is, you know, the, uh, the poor guy that don't have no money and don't, you know, don't have a lot of experience for him to just go out and mix up some Super Soil and grow a plant is next to impossible. Uh, I wanted to keep it organic. Uh, I tried using native soils, but here in Tennessee, all of our soil consists of mostly clay, so that's, you know, not really a viable option. So uh, the need for um, nutrients was there, but, you know, to try to find something that's at least close to natural is uh, kind of hard to do. Uh, I toyed with uh, Technoflora. Um, those were the only ones that I, I really messed with, and uh, or no, I did a I did a couple grows with uh, Botanicare and some cocoa. Uh, then I got turned on to this sweet leaf. Uh, I'm having excellent results, but I don't see uh, a lot of people talking about it. I, I've not heard uh, other people's experiences, and there's just not a lot of info out on them. Let me ask you, in terms of experience, let me ask you a more pointed question. Um, how many harvests, sir, have you had, like, in toto? Uh, eight. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's see if anybody, I appreciate the call. Let's see if anybody else wants to call in before we end the show and talk a little bit about uh, Sweet Leaf. Um, my observation here about this caller he didn't have one bad thing to say about any product. It didn't matter. I, I ran it with Botanicare. Um, I ran it with Technoflora. And this got comparable results. Didn't say anything bad about any product. Do you know why? Because that guy is a good grower. The guys who are good growers... Those things, I mean, they're. Hydroponics. Yes, sir. I'm on. I'm just finishing up. Can I call you back in a minute? Okay, thanks. So that's all I'm suggesting is here's a guy who didn't have any failures no matter which way he did it. And the only thing he didn't want to do was spend money. There's no spectrum. There was no burying eggshells in his media. There was no pH lockout. I mean, that guy named four nutrients. Even if he did two Botanicare, <clears throat> I mean, I just want to point this out. I mean, this is what I do. Like, I look at this I, diagnostician. Even if he did two Botanicare and he did two Technoflora and he said he did uh, what was the other one that he said he did? He said he did something else. Even if he did one sweet grow that he's doing right now, he said he's had about eight harvests and there's seven just from the nutrients. So I'm just suggesting that, um, that we, I should have probably asked him what size nutrients they sent him. Uh, I'm just suggesting that, um, you know, and, and let me just, we're, there's a couple people saying that, you know, it sounds like I called it that he's a rep. I will guarantee you this individual was not a rep. One, people in Tennessee don't lie like that. This is a good old boy. He's got no reason. So we just start off as the individual. There's no reason for him to lie. Second, he didn't have any problems. Third, he said his nutri the nutrients did the same as all the other ones. Dude, that's not a rep. Reps are like, oh my God, we get 20% more. Here's, here's the paperwork. Here's 20% more. It's, you get, what he said was exactly what I've been telling you. Is that good growers don't think about those things. They don't think about things like light per square meter. This guy, it, there was no thought in this guy's mind beyond, it looks like the other one. 
he was literally telling us exactly what he was thinking. And, and, and if we go down that route, we, we have to ask ourselves, grower, lots of success, switches nutrients, looks like, I mean, that's some pretty good data for us to collect. Not when I get a first time grower telling me that he's going to tell me about LEDs. We saw what happened last night. I mean, you just watch the strategy, right? I mean, Mayweather out just outpaced him. It was up to McGregor to show that he was right. That's why, that's why at the end of those comments, the guy who was like, the guy, this guy who was telling me how smart I am, he actually like literally writes this. I'm actually trying to give the grow boss ammo to point out the error of my logic, but he's horribly failing. But since you're an expert commenting on, on another post, since you're an expert yourself and you did all the research, you tell me where I'm wrong or proof you're the idiot if you don't or prove you're the idiot if you don't, but only use verifiable, verifiable facts and or logic, of course. I, I just, this is, I mean, this is the guy who left that review on the Google account. This person cannot grow, just cannot grow. It doesn't matter because they want to argue and plants can't tolerate that much effort. So my observation to this individual is, so you're wrong and want abuse. No wonder you think I'm the one that's failing. We have different measures of success. Besides, th that's not how this works. Since I'm the man and you're on my channel, you need to prove that I'm wrong using verifiable facts and or logic, of course. So I'm just suggesting that there are people that want to argue. There are people that want to grow. There are people that want to do all sorts of stuff. And that's why, just like, just like, oh my God. I just, it's, 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 so yeah. Um, give me one. It's, um, uh, 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 no, no, no. I don't want, I don't want to, uh, I guess I don't have a choice. Oh Yeah. It's totally this, right? It, it oh, I can't. Probably because it's bootleg. Oh, so uh, anyway, it's just uh, it's just straight, uh, just straight dog whisper, right? You just and and really all I'm doing is teaching guys how to use the equipment, right? Because here's a grower that just uh, straight up says, "You know, I switched nutrients, and what did I get? And what have I told you guys? What have I told you?" What have I told you guys always? I've told you guys always that yields based on light and quality is based on grower talent. So if you're a good ass grower, you take credit for it. It is not the equipment. Besides, if you switch nutrients, there's three possibilities. You get more, you get the same, or you get less. Two of those possibilities are not a win situation. And here's a good grower who demonstrates that. All right, not my customer. Boom, I can smoke another bowl. God, I just, I just love the dog whisper. I just, it's so funny. I mean, right, it's just, that that's literally what I do when they come through my store. Otherwise, I have to be the guy, and I've been trying to be friendlier, but uh, yeah. So, sweet, sold some more stuff online. That's what I do. That's what separates my show from all the other shows. At the end of the show, you can buy my book books and I make money. I don't have to sell everybody else's product. You could buy a grow boss shirt. Oh, sweet. Sold something. Anyway, that's going to uh, pretty much wrap up this show. Um, yeah. So I think I'm done. It's time to open the store. It's past time to open up the store. Um, I think I've got a guy coming in next week that's going to show us how to press something. And he's going to smoke me out. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I don't really have too much more for you. So buy the grow book. Everything I tell you in my videos is in the grow book. 
You can smoke with me on the weekends, but you can buy the grow book every day of the week. Pretty soon, I've got oh, got a couple more things coming up. Um, I'm just finishing up those last two Bushmaster videos. I'm trying to get more customers in my store to uh, want to be on project. Uh, I'm trying to get it more in a position where even if the people that want to sell me used stuff, if I could just capture some of that, I think that'd be pretty good. So listen. Have a great week. It's an easy Sunday. It's hot here in Vegas. It's stormy down in Texas. Um, and uh, listen, I appreciate all you guys. Thanks so much. Oh, fuck. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, um... Okay. Okay. I got deals. You, okay. Somebody said deals. Okay. I got you on this. You wanted a couple of deals. All right. Sorry. You're right. Okay. Somebody got in a fight with his neighbor and sold me a bunch of equipment. This T5 right here. Boom. If you guys, if you're local, you can come in and get this T5 for me for a hundred and you can have for 100, 100 bucks. You can have for 95 bucks. That T5. Or that T5. Oh, uh, that's... No, you can have this T5 because I got that one from... I got this one from uh, Dirty Guy a little while back who came in. So you can have that one with bulbs for 60 bucks, but you got to clean it up. Oh, yeah. I, I got... Oh, this guy. This guy was Big Mouth Guy who argued with his neighbor and dude those are super those are super nice trays there are no bolts or anything check this out that vertical just fits in the horizontal like dude that is a fucking tray for a home grower and they're super inexpensive if you wanted to do hydro so you can have that tray you can have two setups and two trays one use tray one new tray um dude you can have for 100 bucks each you know what I mean? That, that I was super impressed with how nice that was. Um, let's see. Oh, I got a couple of new vacuum bag sealers. There we go. A couple of new vacuum bag sealers. That's pretty good. And I've really just been trying to stock up on stuff. You can see I've got like the CO2 section. Boom. With a little bit of uh, TNB behind that price sticker. So I've started pricing up the store now that it looks good. We've got CO2 on a couple of shelves right there. A couple of used LEDs from Kind LED. I think I probably got the pair for uh, for 700. I've got them selling. I got them marked for 650. It looks like, but you could bring me cash and get them for a little less, because I have no need for that many, and I'll probably get more. Okay, we've got lots of bulbs stacked just because we've been, ah, look how packed this place is. This is my walkway now, right? That's the, that's the 36,000 big, it's the big boy, like outdoor split unit with, uh, with the uh, matching indoor, right? The indoor vent, the blower section. Let's see, what other used products did I get? Oh. oh, I still have that 10 inch fan. Woo. That's a lot of fan. That's dirty fan too. I got an eight inch down there and some thousand watt ballast. I went through a bunch of thousand watt ballast. Oh, you know what? I had some guy come in and buy a couple of Mars from me on pre-order. So I just took that money and added way more to it. And I bought like a bunch of Mars lights and a bunch of Mars boxes for that guy. Uh, you know, it's a little bit of money, but better than it going to me, better it goes to me than online. Um, this was the guy who uh, mouthed off to his neighbor that sold me that stuff. And then, okay, so we got the good stuff up here, right? So burners, and we got LEC lights, and these two kinds right here. So these are the 750s. I think you can have that for 900 bucks. I mean, they look like new, and they're new in a box. Everyone always tells me they got 50,000 hours. That's why they don't buy them over HIDs. So I'm like, oh, then buy them used. What do you care? They're like new. Here's a kind 1000. I'm hoping to get a couple more off that guy who traded me this one. He was a super nice guy. He came in with his wife. They uh, watched my videos. That was pretty sweet. I like that. Um, yes. 
So that's, uh, let's see, that's what I've got used. I mean, I've got used bulbs and, and uh, we've got a couple more shelves to fill. I don't quite know what to do with them yet. Um, oh, dude, you guys wanna see the disaster? I'll show you the disaster. You're gonna love this one. Oh yeah. The, yeah, yeah, the stacked to the fucking gills. There is so much shit in here, just stacked to the gills. And I'm trying to right size my store. And I got like 30 tanks back here and just so many buckets and hoods. Oh my God. There is so much and so many ROs. Oh my God, we go through so many ROs. Oh, oh, crazy, crazy. All right. There you go. That's, that's the store. And uh, those are the deals that came in this week. Yeah, totally forgot about the deals. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's what people call it the Mandela effect. Okay, like and share, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, you can see the technology is getting better. I uh, failed on the show today. I am still working on. I am still working on uh, on the cannabis information network. Like I posted a couple of videos for stores and vendors on there. Um, you know where I talk more about the business side of things. It would be great if you guys. Ooh, somebody, we got a, if you park just right outside, we get the sun, we get a gnarly, okay. So if you guys have something you were looking for, like a cannabis information network on YouTube is there. I've started posting videos. Um, so yeah, that's all I'm saying. Um, store closes early today. Uh, we did pretty good yesterday. Store, uh, store did pretty well yesterday. Got rid of a lot of stuff I didn't want or need. And uh, then I had more of that I don't have to replace. That's the best inventory. Inventory you don't have to replace. Uh, 100% profit. Yeah. We had some people stop in from California just to meet the grow boss. And a super nice couple. Had a few questions. Bought the kit from the store. Showed me some pictures. Yeah. Listen, that wasn't too bad. All right, that was the used. Uh, yeah. Oh, Denali Princess, thank you. I appreciate. Oh, you know what? Listen, nobody's right there. I've got. I think I've got your picture. Hang on a sec. I got. Oh, the petite princess picture. I oh, will do that next week. Anyway, okay. I want to go live my life. You go live your life. Um, have a great Sunday. Totally appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thank you.